A continuous mining machine cuts coal from a mine seam. It then conveys the coal onto hauling machines, which transports it onto a conveyor belt. From there, the coal is transported to the surface. Continuous mining machines take up a lot of space in a mine, which, of course, leaves little room for error. This is especially the case when moving or tramming the machine from one tight place to another. Over the past three decades, at least 35 miners were killed, and at least 238 were injured when pinned, crushed, or struck by a continuous mining machine. MSHA projects the rule will prevent injuries and deaths. A number of mines have installed proximity detection systems to help prevent these types of accidents. A proximity detection system's electronic sensors detect motion or the position of one object relative to another. The systems provide warning signals and stop machines before they pin, crush, or strike miners. Proximity detection systems, under the final rule, are considered to be functioning properly when the system is working as designed and will cause tramming or repositioning continuous mining machines to stop before contacting a miner. Provide audible and visual warnings on the minor wearable component and a visual warning on the machine that alerts miners before the system causes the machine to stop. Provide a visible signal on the machine that indicates the machine-mounted components of the proximity detection system are functioning properly. Prevent machine movement if any machine-mounted component of the proximity detection system is not functioning properly. However, a system with any machine-mounted component that is not functioning properly may allow machine movement if it provides an audible or visual warning signal distinguishable from other signals during movement. Such movement is permitted only for purposes of relocating the machine from an unsafe location for repair. Prevent interference that adversely affects the performance of any electrical systems at the mine. Proximity detection systems must be installed and maintained in proper operating condition by a person trained in the installation and maintenance of the system. On January 15, 2015, MSHA published a final rule on proximity detection systems for use on continuous mining machines in underground coal mines. The rule became effective March 16, 2015. The final rule states that mine operators must equip continuous mining machines except full-face continuous mining machines with proximity detection systems. For proximity detection systems with minor wearable components, the mine operator must provide a minor wearable component to be worn by each miner on the working section. Continuous mining machines manufactured after March 16, 2015 must meet the requirements in this section no later than November 16, 2015. Newly manufactured continuous mining machines must meet these requirements when placed in service with a proximity detection system. MSHA believes that it is important for these continuous mining machines to be equipped with a proximity detection system to meet the final rules requirements when placed in service. A continuous mining machine is placed in service when it is equipped with a proximity detection system and placed in an underground coal mine. MSHA considers a continuous mining machine to be equipped with a proximity detection system when the machine-mounted components are installed on the machine and miners are provided with minor wearable components. Continuous mining machines manufactured and equipped with a proximity detection system on or before March 16, 2015 must meet the requirements in this section no later than September 16, 2016. Continuous mining machines manufactured and not equipped with a proximity detection system on or before March 16, 2015 must meet the requirements in this section no later than March 16, 2018. These machines must meet these requirements when placed in service with a proximity detection system. MSHA interprets the March 16, 2018 date 
to also apply to continuous mining machines with an existing proximity detection system that require the installation of a new proximity system to meet the requirements of the rule. For these machines, MSHA anticipates that the new proximity detection will be installed during the first planned rebuild. See Program Policy Letter P15-V-01 posted on MSHA's website for additional information. The longer phase-in schedule under the final rule provides mine operators time to complete the installation during planned rebuilds or scheduled maintenance and provides time to train the workforce on proximity detection systems. Once these continuous mining machines are retrofitted with a proximity detection system, mine operators must meet the requirements of the final rule when these machines are placed in service. When preparing for an inspection, review and understand 30 CFR 75-1732 policy and inspection procedures. Next, become familiar with the proximity detection system provisions. Conduct a records review at the mine site. These records must be maintained in a secure book or electronically in a secure computer system not susceptible to alteration. Review the mine records for any defects and corrective actions of machine mounted and minor wearable components. These records provide a history of component defects or recurring maintenance of system components. In addition, check records to determine if system failures are promptly addressed by showing defects, corrective actions, and dates of corrective actions. Records shall identify each minor wearable component when a defect is found as a result of a minor wearable check. Verify that these checks are conducted at the beginning of each shift that the components are to be used and that defects are corrected before they are used. Records for the machine mounted components need not identify each machine mounted component. Provide a general statement indicating that the system has been examined and any defects found as a result of the check. Record corrective actions and dates of corrective actions before the end of the shift. Also verify that checks are performed at the specified time intervals near the beginning of the shift. Check the training records of miners who install and maintain the proximity detection system. Let's take a look at general inspection procedures for a proximity detection system. First, check the minor wearable components of the proximity detection system. Make sure the minor wearable components are not physically damaged. Verify that minor wearable components are not physically damaged before use. Physical damage could consist of housing cracks or joint separation, broken charging port or excessive corrosion on charging terminals, torn gaskets, seals, or membranes on buttons, cracked or missing windows that would compromise the sealed unit, obscured windows such that display screens are not visible, or broken or inoperable LEDs. Verify appropriate voltage. The display screen should indicate the voltage of the unit. The check station or tester should be used to verify proper operation of the minor wearable component before being used underground. Verify proper function of the audible and visible alarms. When you arrive at the working section, confirm that a certified person conducted a check of the machine mounted components. This check shall be conducted at the beginning of each shift that the equipment is to be used. The certified person must verify the check was completed by initials, date, and time. Now, let's take a look at the inspection of the machine mounted components. There are two parts to this inspection. First, there's the static inspection, where the machine is not moving. Then, there's the dynamic inspection, where the machine is moving. Let's look at the static inspection first. Make sure that no miners are in the red zone or the hazardous locations of the machine. Position the machine in an intersection where the perimeter of the machine can be accessed safely. Check machine mounted components for physical damage. Visually inspect each of the exposed machine mounted components including generators, cables, cable connections, 
antennas, and display units to verify that they are intact. Check to see if the generator is properly installed and maintained. Ensure LEDs are illuminated and visible. Look for physical damage such as cracks or deformities. Check for broken or loose bolts or brackets. Are the components properly mounted and secured? Check to see that there are no metallic obstructions that may inhibit proper function. Are cables properly connected and protected? Apply power and verify that all generators are powered with specified indicator. Check to see that a visual signal on the machine indicates that the machine mounted components are functioning properly. Walk around the machine to verify the location of the warning and stop zones being generated by the system. Please note, the warning and stop zones should extend beyond the perimeter of the machine. Inspect different orientations and heights of the minor wearable component to determine zone size and shape. These warnings must alert miners before the system causes a machine to stop. The warning signals must be distinguishable from other signals. Inspect the interlock functions. Place the minor wearable component inside the stop zone. Depending upon mining conditions, this can be done by placing the minor wearable component on the mine floor or hanging the component from the mine roof with a non-conductive material. Make sure that all miners are outside of the warning zones. Start the pump motor and check the interlock. Notice if the conveyor boom swings or the tram functions when operated. The machine should not move. This inspection can be conducted within the stop zone around the perimeter of the machine. What do you need to do during a dynamic inspection? Place a minor wearable component outside of the warning zone. Depending upon mining conditions, this can be done by hanging the component from the mine roof with a non-conductive material or by placing the minor wearable component on the mine floor. Have the machine operator swing or tram the machine toward the component to verify that the warning and stop zones of the machine function properly. If the inspection reveals that the proximity detection system stops the machine appropriately, then the proximity detection system is working and is installed and maintained in proper operating condition. The machine mounted components are considered electrical equipment and must be examined, tested and properly maintained to assure safe operating condition. Permissible equipment such as the controller in an explosion proof enclosure must be examined at least weekly to see that it is in permissible condition. Follow the electrical inspection procedure according to Chapter 3 in the Inspection Procedures Handbook. If technical issues arise, contact your supervisor to request electrical specialist assistance. While on the working section, ask questions of miners wearing their minor wearable components. Are miners trained? Do they understand how the proximity detection system works during tramming, cutting, and loading? Do the miners know the size and shape of warning and stop zones? How to respond to warning signals? How to respond to system malfunctions? How to check, recharge, and use their minor wearable components? How the system performs or know of any interference issues that adversely affect performance of any electrical system? Which continuous mining machines are equipped with a proximity detection system? And which continuous mining machines are not equipped with a proximity detection system? During your observation of the cutting cycle while on the working section, observe miners' work practices for compliance with the mine's approved roof control plan and red zone requirements. Make sure miners follow the red zone's requirements for all section mining equipment.